Hi everyone, Wendy here today at the Denver Museum of Miniatures, Dolls, and Toys, and today we're going to look at some of our sewing machines. Now, um, you may ask why we have sewing machines, and that's because sewing machines were a really popular teaching toy for generations. Um, I haven't really put these in order, just a little bit. I didn't pull all their records. I'm basically just reviewing them for um, condition today after our big move. So this first one is a Singer. You can see it's got all these great, you know, like looks very familiar moving parts. Um, I really like, and you can see, let's see if I can get it. You can see when I turn this how the gears work. And there's instructions, you know, of which way to turn it. But most kids, little girls especially, would be learning to sew at a very young age. Um, I actually have some kids that live, that are friends up on Lookout Mountain, and they sewed their own face masks, which is pretty cool. Um, so this Singer one, I don't have a date with me, um, but it's, um, you know, in full working order, it even has a needle. You can see that, it's so hard, it's so thin. Um, so that's our first one. It's a Singer, and you probably have still heard of Singer sewing machines. Um, this is another sewing machine. It's got this beautiful fancy painting on it. It's another hand crank sewing machine. It doesn't have its needle. Um, it's kind of neat to just see how these levers move. And this technology, while it's changed a lot, um, in some ways it still is very the same. And this is where you would put your spool of thread. And this one, I don't know if you can see it, but it says made in Germany, um, stamped right there. We also have one of these that's um, post-World War II, and it says made in occupied Germany, which is kind of a neat, neat way to trace history. Um, so another one we have here, this is a Gateway Junior Model NP1. I don't have a date on this one. I do like how red it is. And you're also seeing this really um, useful idea of adding suction cups. So suction cups, you could put it down on a table and then it's not gonna move on you, which is, which is always tricky. This one also still has its needle and you can see kind of how it works. A little bit dusty so that's one that's going to need to be cleaned before it goes back in its home. Um, the next one we're going to look at is still in its original box the Betsy Ross miniature sewing machine. Um, so this one was made in the United States in New Jersey by the Gibraltar Manufacturing Company Incorporated. This one starts to look much more modern, I think. Um, it's got these kind of great Art Deco um, details here. It also says patent pending. It's got that suction cup technology. Um, and it also, you can see like the first one we looked at, it's got the arrows for which way to crank it. Um, and you can raise and lower everything. Um, I just, this one's a little stickier than some of the others. Um, but it even still has a spool of thread on there. So that's probably from when it was exhibited last. It's a neat piece. Right. And next up we have the Vulcan Senior Child Sewing Machine. Um, and there's a really great booklet in here. For the lucky little lady with a Vulcan instruction booklet. Let me go through here a little bit. So how to set it all up. Start your Vulcan sewing with simple work, such as a new bib for your doll or a set of handkerchiefs. As your skills grow, you can make 
take on more complicated sewing. Here are some of the things for which this handy machine can be used. Dolls dresses, pram sets, table runners, sachets, school shoe bags, scarves, dolls undies, tea cozies, table napkins. Good luck and happy sewing with your Vulcan. So this one was made in England. Out. This is great, like, how fun does that look? Great red. It's really, this one and the last one are both, like, really heavy. Um, and this one even has, this one's from 1957. This one even has this slip-on section. So you can really have a great, you know, sewing surface. Um, so you can keep it all supported and it just slides on so you can still have it in the back um, or in the smaller box and it even has this great detail on how to how to thread it um, a lot of fun oh and it even has so you can see here there's a hole and this uses a clamp so you can put this in here and then you can clamp it to your table. So even better than a suction cup, the sucker's really not going anywhere. And then last but not least, we have um, a fairly modern one. So this is another singer. So we've trade, we've, uh, and mark this well. This is our last one. So when you open it up, I bet this is gonna look like a lot like a sewing machine, like a grown-up sewing machine, just a little bit smaller. Um, it's got this great plastic case, so you can keep it all all tidy. The inside of that looks like, and the little clips just hold it on. And this one's electric, so it's our first one with a foot pedal. Um, you used to see foot pedal sewing machine, like sewing machine tables, you'll see. A lot of times they're at thrift stores. Um, but this one is the um, first electric one we've had. And this one's neat because it does a lot. Oh, it's battery operated, so you're not plugging it in. Um, Required power input DC only three volts, 0.6 amps. Mean. Um, so in some ways, you know, it's much more complicated, but a lot of this is still like a very similar um, mechanism to what we've been seeing. So I think that's it on our sewing machines. I think if we're gonna talk favorites of mine. I think I really like this one. It's actually it's just so heavy that even though you're going to have to hold it down, it might have a place for a clamp. Um, I just, I think it's really pretty. Um, and I like this, I like this cherry red one. This one looks like um, a good starter sewing machine. I hope you had fun learning about child size sewing machines with us today. And I hope if you're a sewer, you have many happy sewing projects. And if you're interested, I hope you get the chance to learn. Take care.